Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. It's Drew here and we're gonna build the Iron Rattler Coaster Dynamics Nano Coaster today. So I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to do and here's a nice look at the box. We're gonna open up this box and we've got a couple things inside actually, uh, more than you'd expect. So here's the base, the instruction manual is right there, and then we actually have the coaster itself which is struggling to get out. There we go. So here's the instruction manual, and here's another look at the base itself, which you can already see the layout on that. And here is a look at the back of the box. It did cost $35, but I think it's well spent. And here's step one to the instructions, just so you can get a look at that. And uh, here is a time lapse of me trying to get this off. There's a little paper covering on the actual base itself. It's pretty hard to get off, but here, is just some like satisfying stuff to watch I think me peeling it off so there's one side done took me I think about five minutes to do that maybe even seven or eight and then the other side once I knew where to pull it was much easier and quicker to get it off so there's actually that little tab right there is where you should end up pulling, right next to where the station should be. It's really easy to pull right there. So once you get the main bulk of this paper off, you're going to have about three or four little spots left of paper that you should end up pulling from the corners, I would say, is the best spot to pull these. It's easier to get a grip on the corners, of course, just because there are multiple sides to attack it from. Also, this is like the most satisfying thing to do when you're actually pulling off the paper just with the resistance it gives. It's just like one of those weird things that we find satisfying as humans. So, just just a, just one of those weird things. And boom, there you go. It's very reflective just to let you know so you can see my face. But here is the instruction we should do next. It's step 2. We need to put on the chain lift the first drop and that is this piece right here. It also includes the brake run in the station as well. Now with this packaging it's kinda harder to open up because the actual glue that holds the pieces of the track onto the paper stick to the bag itself so it's kinda hard to even pull out of the bag itself because it's stuck to the bag so I actually ended up having to tear the bag in half and tear it apart so I could even get to the pieces because you can even see here I'm struggling to try and even pull it out of the bag. And boom, I finally just decide rip it off, see what happens, try to pull it more. It's just, it's stuck to the glue itself, so. And for each piece in this set, I think there's one piece of glue, maybe even two on some of them, but I think it's one mainly, and those are usually near the center of each piece. Boom, there we go, finally out. Now here is a time lapse of me doing the first piece. Now, just to let you know, it is easier if you bend this before you try putting it in. I tried to start with it not bent at all, and it took a lot longer than it could have taken. But the hardest part about this piece, I would say, is not the lift hill, not the first drop, not the first hill after that. It's actually the station and the brake run, because it's a pretty tight turnaround. So it, it does take some time. But once you finish, you see these little tabs through the bottom what I'm pointing at right now and you have to push them downwards to make sure they're locked and secured into place and boom there's the second step done it looks fantastic already and I can't wait to get the rest of it on so here on step three we have to put on the airtime hill the two overbank turns and the zero G roll it's this piece right here and this piece probably took the longest out of all the steps 
just because of how tight it is because it is literally just turned around on itself for the most part so just trying to get the one piece over the first piece we put in was really hard to do but this piece was definitely the hardest to try and put in just because of how tight it is for sure uh, took me I think just for this piece alone about 20 to 25 minutes uh, took quite a while but I did not bend it beforehand like I should have so just be careful when you're putting in things like this though just because the tiny tabs on bottom can actually start to bend if you've got it not in the right spot and they, they can eventually break but here we go finally got it in all the way pushing in the tabs now but you just have to be careful not to break those tabs because otherwise it can be really loose and could possibly fall out later on when moving it so there we go there's step three done Now we move on to step four, which is getting that turnaround section on the quarry wall all the way to the dive off the quarry wall. It's this piece right here. Now this was probably the quickest out of the three pieces to put on, which I was actually pretty surprised by, but the drop off the quarry wall was the easiest part about this piece, but the actual being on the quarry wall, just the way it turns around is a little awkward to try and work with. It wasn't as tight as I would have thought but here we go finished with that piece already and pushing the tabs in to make sure it's secure and there we go a pretty much completed iron rattler and it looks amazing I absolutely love it now here's the final step, step five. You gotta put the station housing on there and the sign. It's these two pieces here. Be careful with the station, by the way. It does bend quite a lot and it is easy to break, I would say. It's probably the easiest piece to break out of all the set. And then you put it right where the station goes, make sure it's secure. And then it's got really tiny little tabs that you gotta press in just to make sure it stays. And the next up is this sign, which I love. If it would focus, is it gonna focus? No, come. Oh well, that's fine. Now let's. Uh, oh, also uh, make sure your uh, your books are out of the way of falling on top of your model if you are building. <laughs> but here is the sign, all ready to go. It's looking amazing. I just love the way this looks. It is a little smaller than I expected, but it is made to fit in this size of box. But it looks absolutely amazing. So here's some glamour shots right now just to show off this amazing looking model. I love the way it looks in every way. It's amazing. I would love to even see a possible like train version of this where it's just the train. That would be nice. But it really reminds me of the real thing a lot. It's probably as close as it could be with these materials this small and it looks absolutely incredible. Now you just gotta find a spot to put it on your shelf. Uh, uh, for me, that's it's quite a tough job, actually. Uh, no, up there, no, no. Oh, I know, I know where to put it. There we go. Oop. Perfect. So this nano coaster is an amazing amazing thing to put on your shelf if you're a coaster enthusiast or just a fan of a particular coaster i love it this is my first ever nano coaster that i've bought and i hope to buy tons in the future especially once i make it to other parks that have these models this is actually one of the one of two of the first models for the six flags parks and the other one at a six flags park is twisted cyclone at six flags over georgia and this was 35 dollars in the u.s so Honestly, a little 
a little pricey I would have said immediately but once I actually felt the materials it really is steel and it's actually really well made and I love the way it looks as well but you can find a bunch of these models at a lot of the Cedar Fair parks already so at Cedar Point Kings Island Kings Dominion and I honestly can't wait to see what other models will come out in the near future I also am really hoping for Knott's and Magic Mountain to get some of these models in the future because I would love to get a Twisted Colossus or a West Coast Racers or an X2 or possibly even an Accelerator or even a Hang Time would be really cool as well as a Ghost Rider. I'm just really excited to see how many of these models I can end up collecting because this is definitely going to be something that I want to collect because I've always been a model fan and also a coaster fan and it just brings those two into one. But thank you for watching, I really appreciate it, and actually let me down, know down below what type of models you'd like to see in the future. What coaster would you like to see become a model in the future at your home park or at any park for that matter. So thank you for watching again, and of course, as always, we'll see you on the next ride.